Okie doke. All right, guys. So today I'm going to show you guys how to do the small cards. I've been doing this a lot. So throughout all of my broadcast, you will be able to see uh, different things um, doing these little cards. So, um, if you're an artist, you're probably familiar with the word ACO. ACO just basically means artist card. Um, there is two kinds, which are the prints, of course, and the editions and the originals. And that's what basically it means. So, I actually am also a collector of these cards for, for many, many years. I love how they look. I just love the miniature look of them. I really like and appreciate the handmade quality of them and so I myself also collect these things um, and I've been doing it for many years and I also exchange with my colleagues okay so I actually just use a already pre-cut all right pre-cut um, card that I have here I actually bought this from Cold Bird School here in Dover and they have this already pre-cut and it comes in a package so I was like maybe I can do something with these and I did a couple sketches and I kept some of them so I can have basically the size the reason why I wanted to keep this size also is because it's supposed to uh, basically be my stencil okay for the rest of my cards and I have like different things that you can actually you don't have to do like um, just that size you can do all kinds of stuff I also have bookmarks okay and I have done a couple of bookmarks myself which I actually sell online as well so this is the bookmark size and since it's handmade you can either punch it made whatever it is that you're going to put in and then do the watercolor so it's actually you have choices here you don't have to do like one specific size i like to work in small quantities and i like to work into like small miniatures i love to do them and i like i said this has been going on for years so i just want to keep myself alive doing these things um we're going to do this type of flowers that I have here so I'm just oh I'm just going to put it right there on this side so you guys can see what I'm actually doing working from natural working from life gives you the opportunity to actually change the color and change the way it looks or you know you can make it sideways you can make it this way you can make it frontal you have choices here to how on how you can do this and I think working from actual small flowers is even better for your cards and you don't necessarily like i said have to work on a small level you can do different things bigger size etc etc so i'm just going to put this here and i'm going to show you some of the stuff that i actually have done doing the cards with different mediums this is watercolors this is acrylic watercolor watercolor acrylic and gouache a little bit of it i'm sorry watercolor and gouache a little bit of it and ink and watercolors so there's plenty of ideas out there of what to do and how to do them and i bought these cards um from an ebay shop these are three by four super thick top loader which is actually plastic now since i already have this i'm going to keep them probably reuse the reuse this when i get to send them away but um i wanted to really ink up on the plastic thing because i don't know lately i just been feeling like <clears throat> everything plastic everything kind of like I don't know like I'm trying not to make it worse and there's nothing wrong with it but I'm going to try my best to do more eco-friendly packaging so that's why I haven't gotten no more backings like this I'm basically going to do my own backing and basically recycle everything that I got that includes tissue paper um, from like you can like from presents 
um you know that tissue paper that is almost like dec dec decorative hi how are you decorative tissue paper you can use um backing from like uh shoe boxes you can do uh different things and i actually got from the from uh from like a chipping i've had a whole roll of um not the white paper but the brown bag basically paper so that's how i'm going to be chipping from now on um and i actually chipped out my bigger larger paintings that way as well on the brown bag it was just like i felt like you know what i try to look at everywhere like a box with plastic and put all that confetti things in there and for some reason, I wasn't like, I was already feeling it like, try to stay as natural as possible, as eco-friendly as possible. Stop using, wasting so much plastic, you know? So as for now, this is going to stay with me because I already got them thinking, of course, you know, I'm just trying to protect the work, etc., etc. but it's not really environmentally friendly and so we're switching you know if the person decides to do that that's that's their choice but for me i'm just gonna chip them out that way i think it's easier and if just in case you don't know what let me see where i have it i'm talking about oh yeah the roll where is my roll the roll is inside a closet outside but you can reuse all kinds of stuff sometimes when I send out like for boxes for Amazon and stuff like that, what I'm going to, it, actually I have a bunch right now <laughs> waiting in line. Instead of throwing those out, I'm just going to cut them. You can do a bunch of things, um, envelopes with it. Um, actually, you know what? I should have really done this project completely and actually show you guys how to do the envelopes for these cards because I think that's going to save you a lot of Mula as well money but without further ado let's start doing it oh before i go this is what we're going to use i'm going to use half and half a bunch of whatever it is that i have available these are actually watercolor pencils these are fantasia they're not pricey they're actually pretty um pretty reasonable you've probably seen them in the art store and since i moved from south jersey this was my first 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 pack of watercolor pencils so i've been having these for about six seven years and here they are i actually sharpened them all so i can be good today all right so either or doesn't matter if you want to work this way or you want to work that way it's up to, it's your choice and this is very simple very simple so it depends on what you want to create depending on how you want it um what is it that you want to, to create and then you decide which angle you're going to choose and not necessarily you can do flowers you can do portraits you can do landscapes you can do all kinds of stuff and if we have a chance and i have some time i'll show you a variety of all of the stuff that you can do including the flowers so um used to back in the day where i used to like pick up right from the corner and a whole sheet of watercolor paper um but now like i said i told someone oh i said i want a quality over quantity so i'm also but i just don't want to waste too much paper so i'm also and i recycle everything the whole sheet will be recycled i don't throw away nothing i will paint even in the corner if i have to um so yeah, so this is my, I'm going to do the mechanical pencil. So that's one thing that I was looking, actually I was looking online to have like ideas on how to like chip stuff and this lady came out and she was like rolls of toilet paper. That idea with everything that is going on for me, not so well not so good at the moment and very anti-hygienic so no thank you not 
Or you can definitely use a roll of pa toilet paper, but not use, like, not, I don't know. There's something about it that I'm just not <laughs> into that idea as I'm here. <laughs> so we're going to do one sideways. And the reason why I'm doing this is so like that when I start painting, I don't get off the line. I'm, you always like when, you know, natural stuff, like when you're doing something by hand, you will always do like your own little whatever. But most of the time, you are going to be okay with the size. Sometimes we kind of just, it's okay to get off the line basically. Okay, so this is basically my guideline as to how big I want to do the work. We're going to do one in the middle here. And I paint them right here. I don't take these out. I don't cut them and then do them. Sometimes I do if I'm just going to work in one. But okay. That's too close home. That is too close to the edge. Okay. All right. Thank you very much to our reusable cart right there. And I have my good water bottle here, my water container, okay, clean. And I'm going to make sure that I give you guys good, good view of how I'm doing this. So we're just gonna, okay, try my best to hold on. Make sure that I. Kind of tricky with the um, give you like be on the same spot as you guys but not exclude you from a good view so you guys can see and I kind of just start playing around with my flowers as to how I want them and not necessarily like in an order which is kind of right there okay so I if I'm doing like okay, so we see right here on the corner <clears throat> if I'm doing like a sketch from my memory or if I'm doing a sketch from live so I try to be I try kind of just focus my my um, what's it called like my view my actual view so I'm focusing on this side I'm thinking I'm basically almost like shrinking your canvas does that make sense maybe like doing this very small point view I don't know if you ever have like a chance to actually make your own your viewfinder but that's the same thing that I'm actually doing when I'm looking at my flower and of course you have it that way so if you like you can actually use this video to do your own because if you were in a in a studio you have a chance you don't have a chance to do the same so okay and then right here right here and it's gonna be quick you don't have to be here all day gonna get the lightest pink and watercolor pencils will basically work about the same way as in watercolor I mean color pencils so I actually have um, like to layer them okay so that's what we're gonna do 
The first is this side with a very light pink. Okay. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to use this other pink. Not everywhere, but some parts. I'm just going to add that pink. And you notice that I'm kind of just drawing at the same time. Here. I'm almost done. And then I'm going to paint the inside of the flower with my yellow. And right here. Okay. Then I'm going to come here and we're going to do and use the green. And I only add it wherever I feel like that green can actually make impact. And now, with any tiny brush that you might have, we're going to basically just wet the watercolor just kind of make sure that you can see and it doesn't matter where you start So even though watercolor kind of just acts like that, like the watercolor pencil, you will always want to make sure that it's dry. Although you can actually do things, um, just pour water or just grab the pencil and be drawing on top of it. You can do that. So we're going to wait for this one to dry and then we're going to move on to the next because I want to do the entire, basically the entire sheet. And I use like different things, different uh, parts of the original, like parts of this I will be basically just putting on to my paper. So not necessarily the same flower, I can use any of them. Or whatever whatever I feel at that moment that I felt like yeah I kind of like it or you can do the same flower in a different with a different color Do. I think I have to sharpen.
and I'm making it blue. know that green and yellow makes I mean blue and yellow makes green so that's what I'm doing here I got a lot of, I get a lot of um, colors like machine coming. Spam risk. That's what the phone says. I know. So you guys get to see. how I'm basically just waking up the watercolor pencil okay and we're gonna do the same thing with the so you can see here okay and then we're gonna move to the next this is the third one, so I'm just going to make sure that I have the you can cover. You can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to get it right there. And I'm going to do it now looking at me. So I want it to do on a more different, with a different color. So I'm just going to pick up this one, this two, okay, and we're gonna do it with the pencil. So basically the same flower has done one, two, and then this is our third painting with the same, same flower. You can do it a little bit upwards. really want a really light color first hopefully I can see you can see here and just in case you were wondering I'm actually using hot press paper so it has like a very smoother tooth than actual um, And you can definitely, like, you don't have to do, like, the water. You don't have to mix them with water. You can just do them this way. And use them like a color pencil. So you have many choices when you're using, when you're working with them. I just thought on this small flower, and I, you know, I wanted to just do something very romantic very simple very chic chic very feminine you know what i'm saying so i thought they need to be done in a more simple manner not so much of like sometimes i add a lot of background i just want something simple I 
do this yellow color. Okay. And then I'm going to add this light green here. Okay. And then I'm going to leave the two that are like landscape mode to do two landscapes with or either with color pencils or with the same. And last but not least, I'm going to use a different flower, which is that one. That I'm not using the pencil, I'm using this one. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, it's just. Okay. Going to. And then we're going to go to the one that we did first and we're going to start adding water. So I'm just going to lift up my camera. I'm going to turn off my coffee maker because I can hear her. I can hear a burning coffee.
and then we're gonna go back to the one on top okay we're gonna kind of just redo some of the lines for the flower if that's the case and that if that's what we want of course so I'm just gonna make sure that I mess up my paper And I'm going to get my brush again. I'm going to go on to the second one. And just want to give it a little bit more blue here so I'm just gonna right in the middle this one is a little bit too, too light so these are not like professional kind but they work well with the paper so why not use it so again I'm just gonna add some of the veins Adrian. Okay. And then we're going to paint the last one, which is right here. Right here. <sighs> My chair is drying me nuts. Okay. Where are you? I don't even know which one it is, but we can do something here. We can create something with this one. And one thing that does this thing does is like basically all the waxy part kind of just spreads on the paper. So that's what I love to use them. depending on your liking you can add more color you can leave them like this depending on what you want to accomplish just gonna almost fell off go back to the middle one to the right one I'm going to add a little bit more And then also we're going to do some really dark blue, gray one too, right on the center. And if that doesn't work, we'll get some blue. Let's see. Okay. And I'm going to get the brush. to kind of just pronunciate the corners of the flowers. I'm just going to come here. All right. So get some of that. Just spread it a little bit. And then I like the second one. I don't want to put anything in it. Just a little bit on the inside. We're going to use this color. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to use blue for this one. Make sure that it's still wet, so I don't want to mess with it too much. Just going to go around. And play with the foliage. We're going to leave this alone for a little bit and we're going to use a little bit of pen which I have my micro and hopefully is working. If not, we'll use a sharpie. This thing is over. I had several of them but yeah, so. Let me just use my Sharpie, which is about the same. The microphone though has like sort of thin, which I prefer. So we're just going to compare both of them. Microphone versus Sharpie. You can compare both of them. So this is the Sharpie. Okay, you see the line -ish. that's a sharp beam. Okay, and my clone. So you can see about the difference with them too. Sharpie is the bottom one, my card is the top one. So we're gonna go back to the first flower. Gotta be careful as I touch something that it was wet. And then I'm just gonna add something with pencil.
There's more sideways. from one flower you can create so many things. I'm going to press hard on this pencil. Okay. You see what I'm doing? Then I'm going to, I saw this baby blue, I saw this baby blue that I really like, oh yes baby. Okay, so we're just going to do like a new V. Spread it with a tiny brush here. And I'm thinking that since I have that blue background, something really pale yellow or something maybe will work. Could be red too. Just don't want to add too much to it. Okay, and this is dry, we're going to come back to it, I don't know, this one looks good the way it is, 
I need to add a little, nothing in here. Maybe add a little bit of pencil just to reinforce it. So we're just going to add it here. Maybe here. I like it just the way it looks and we're gonna move to the third one this one is also very delicate I like the look as of as of now I'm just gonna add the pencil just a little bit more pencil inside of it like you can actually help your paintings with your own pencil Sometimes we forget that this is also a medium. And we're going to do, I would like to do the lines also with the pencil, just to reinforce them a little bit more. And I'm using my pencil to actually add to the shadow. As you can see here, I'm adding pencil to the shadow. So it's actually pretty cool to kind of just mix and match with these mediums, including pencil. So last but not least, we want to do our third flower. And I always like to like do like one with everything the other one with just this the other one with that so to this one i probably have everything in there The good thing about this is that it's definitely a handmade item and you can do many things with it. Give it up. Oh, this is the one that is not working. Throw it away.
I think that I can help the first one a little bit more with some more ink. Just gonna We have just made three cards with different ways of examples. And then I'm going to do a very simple landscape in watercolors. Because I haven't done landscapes in a while. And I think in my own humble opinion that I don't know what it is but when you do a landscape a miniature landscape it's I don't know prettier maybe I'm wrong but I have a thing for them so we're just gonna try them I think in a cold press it's better but I'm just gonna do it in hot press. And for my landscape, I'm going to be using, I think these two will do. These two will do. And I also want to keep the theme of very light, very kind of light. So I'm just gonna make sure that I focus the camera. And let's paint, okay? So the first thing that I work with is the sky. I'm just sweating a little bit, okay? And of course, I add my blue, and remember that this paper is wet, so you're going to have blue all over, and I kind of just wisp, wisp it that way, like upwards. I 
And as you work, you kind of just see how you start adding colors to the foreground if you want color or etc. I always like to paint my corners as if the sky ends up there. We all know that we're just creating it. So I like to paint my corners there and you can add different colors to it. You can add yellow, you can add blue, dark blue, you can add red, orange, and I don't know, just display the mood that you want. And the more you whisk, then the more you know that the paint is going to kind of just flow in there. So, that's my sky right there. And I'm gonna come and add some purple, purple distant, distant uh, clouds, distant um, foreground mountains etc I was thinking graduated light okay. the lighter the better if you feel like oh yeah I didn't want it that color use your napkin okay this is also a really good tool you want a little bit more darker I add my blue and usually clouds have bottom part darker and parts of the middle okay <clears throat> Excuse me. That again. I'll make sure that I clean up here because I'm gonna have blue. Because this blue is a very strong color. Just with my brush. My whisk. I'm gonna kind of see if I kind of just went if I want a little bit more of cloud. I take out if this is okay, just leave it alone. Okay, depending on the atmosphere that you want to create, you know that when you do this. You're making it's you're making the um watercolor separate so you're going to add possibly another line of clouds soften the edges a little bit on the cloud just a little bit on the top okay and I kind of just pursue it as if I was actually doing a big painting okay. And then we all know that depending on the mood, sometimes if it's really cloudy or I don't know, then you can add a tiny bit of gray. So you can add it like sparsely, different places, 
looks more like a landscape. Let me just tell the viewer it's cloudy. Okay. And I continue to whisk because we're actually making clouds. Just a little bit. I think that I need less grayish. We're gonna get out. We get it out. So For now, I like the way it looks. My foreground only depicts the farm life. I'm from Jersey, so it's always this yellow, a lot of cornfields. Can be actually a pumpkin farm. And of course, depending on how good it looks with the colors that I actually add, I make it known if there's trees in there or not. And keep in mind that we're basically just doing layers of, so there's always a foreground and then there's always like the beginning of so that beginning is going to be a little bit more greener okay I like to paint like sporadically where I can like leave some parts of the canvas alone like of the white paper because I don't know, maybe there's a river there somewhere. So I have to wait just a tiny bit for it to dry. Maybe it from here and I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more purple. I'm gonna try it on my pal on my palette first and we're just going to add a little bit of purple to the foliage of the background right so it's usually like really light dark 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 right so that's what we're going to do and I don't know I see trees behind us so I just kind of You don't see them, but they'll come out soon. Okay. Pintando un paisaje. I'm going to 
add, this is like um, permission blow. So we're just gonna add like little drops of permission blue and different parts, parts of the landscape. Kind of like to soften out when I add any color. So we make it a really, really colorful um, landscape. And I want to define a little bit more over here. So we're just going to get a bit of blue. And I kind of just squint my eyes as to the form and shape of the cloud, if I can see it. So we're just going to close in over here. Just making clouds, okay? And then... Something is vibrating, I think it's my phone. That's your phone. Oh, okay. Somebody was liking my phone. <laughs> On first look, okay. And then I really I don't know, this cloud needs to be a little bit more so I'm just gonna separate them a bit more and I'm just gonna flick a little bit here. When I was in South Jersey, I looked at clouds every single day. I loved the way I loved the way the sky is in the summer, specifically. So that's something that I appreciate very much about Jersey. Jersey is the only. I think I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it, but. I think it's the only place where you can see so many different clouds together. Okay, just a tiny bit of sun. We're just gonna add the reflection in different places. And we have to, of course, be careful not to make it too bright, too yellow, or make it too close to the blue because we all know what's going to happen. It's going to turn green, so just a tiny bit of sun. I'm going to get my gray and add a bit more just I see here just to close up my cloud over here. And I think I can do I can do some foliage coming from here. And, I don't know, like fake foliage over here. It definitely looks south. Definitely looks south, right there. So we're just gonna get some really bright greens, some dark greens. And with the tip of my tiny brush, we're just gonna add on this side. way of doing tiny bushes and different foliage, just spread it around. Not everywhere, but most of the places. If it gets a little crowded, we kind of just blot out. Not everywhere, but most of the places. We do the same thing with the background. If it's kind of orangey, 
side over here. Since I like flowers so much, we're going to add a bit of flowers, my favorites, which are poppies, on the background over here. Just a tiny one, tiny ones because we're actually doing tiny work. here too. Just make it look like there's more of them in there. since it's like the beginning beginning of the painting we're going to do some really dark green Whatever um, detail you do on a tiny painting, it's just gonna surpass, you know, it's gonna be like on your face type of thing. So, you gotta be careful the way you do your the details, etc. And one thing that there was everywhere was the goose. And Indian geeses were there all the time, every single day. So we're just gonna do one, two, They're always together, you know what I'm saying? And one, two, So there's three, and just want to make sure that that white space is not too much. Kind of just make it look like our background. a little bit of sepia
you can do more but I like them simple so we're gonna do this one but I wanted to add a little bit more clouds rather than that. so let me see maybe it works I'm not sure I'm gonna wait again Since I'm already with the purple, I might just well do more purple. I'm gonna add some gray. And again, we're gonna do the same thing, we're just gonna whisk. Create the clouds. We think that we kind of just went too much. It's very simple, just clean up. One, I don't know. Looks like it's gonna be winter, so I'm gonna add a little bit of red. I say a little bit, and I'm like putting a bunch in there. I know. I just say red. Oh my goodness. I oh, want orange now. And then we're just gonna whisk a little bit. Not too much. With my gray color, we're just kind of, kind of just sweep up the background. And then I like to kind of just add like different things. So I do it with a clean brush. You can do it with a tiny brush or you can do it with this one. It's up to you. I like that blue. <laughs> so, I want it there. Let's get this in. And you can also add like salt if you like. You can do alcohol if you like right now. You can spread a little bit of water if you like. 
So, choice is yours as to what you want to do. I'm just basically doing the same thing that I did with like scrubbing, but just forgot the name of it, but just creating how you call that? <laughs> creating texture. And if you were asking if you can do the same with a bigger canvas or a bigger um are called paper most definitely so, pretty cool this is pretty dry so we're just kind of different places not everywhere And <clears throat> as soon as it dries, we're going to add more color. But of course, we have to wait until it dries. We have our impatience, regardless of how much I want this to be faster. Do it. Here too. Remember that I say that I like to close in the corner, so take your time. And then, of course, we're going to kind of just fake some of the foliage of the background. So I just I want like the tiniest brush the tiniest mark I don't want to like go crazy over it <coughs> and you can tell that I just want things very simple So it's almost like something is there, but we don't know what it is. Now 
was thinking here it kind of does mimic an upper sepia or some sort of pool of snows. Okay. Of course, my favorite color for my shadow, which is blue. It's going to use a lot of blue shadow. Around here for shadow. Okay. Here behind her. And at this moment, I just add whatever I feel that's going to help it. So maybe a little bit more of a dark color here. I just did a bubble there, but unless I mention it, nobody knows. Just kind of flicker. Like there's a little behind there. the same blue just want to taste test it before I do anything I'm just gonna kind of just finish the river so I'm just gonna go around here Correct amount of water on my brush and that's not it. Okay. So I guess winter scene and <laughs> summer scene. That's pretty cool. Right. Looks also like if there's like a some type of that is cool. Anyways, just gonna get a look. Something back here.
these are my cards. I think they're done. Let's see this. Step back a little bit so you guys can see the whole collection. And I'm just gonna let this dry. As soon as it's dry, I start posting and sending them online. I actually sign them. Miniature style of them. for last and then that's it thank you so much for watching i hope that you sprout your own imagination to create different things different things and most importantly to enjoy enjoy life enjoy art have a good night ta-da 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 see ya later on the gate Thanks for watching, thanks for replaying, and thank you if you have followed me on my social media, on my Instagram, I think it's Watercolor Painter Art, on my Twitter is Mary Cruz Art 19 I have all of my social media with my very own name, you can find my work, you can find what I'm working on, you can find also artists like myself that are promoting themselves and on social media. I have an array of great people that I actually follow on Twitter. And if you're an artist and you're starting off, it would be good that you have, you know, friends and you can um, share your work. Uh, I love to promote other people as well, not only myself or my work. And I think that's what it's all about, sharing, okay? Take good care. Thank you again for accompanying me on my journey doing my cards. I'm going to take pictures, post it on Instagram, and also post, post it on my Twitter account. Goodbye. Bye. I'm trying to make it like straight and I can't because of course it's me. Yeah. Me again. Hey bitch. Shouldn't watch. Okay. See ya. Bye.